Five years ago, the world suddenly became full of gates that connected to another world. As a result, many creatures from the underworld that could resist military weapons could crawl out and wreak havoc. At the same time, the profession of hunter also emerged to enter the gates and destroy those monsters. Hunters are people who are chosen through the gate trials. The gates are also ranked from high to low, as gold, silver, and copper. Among them, gold hunters are the ones with unparalleled strength, ranked highest, with money, love, and everything they want. When Subaru was following idol Hirasaka Renzi explaining how to become a gold hunter like him, he suddenly saw a five-star gold gate trial shining next to Subaru. He was startled, stunned, and reached out to open the door and enter. Then his close brother, the caring Ariaki Taiga, who was only 13 years old, rushed over, pushed him hard, and stepped in. That was the first opportunity of Subaru's life that was taken away. Since then, his life has changed 180 degrees. His adopted brother Taiga, after stepping out of the gate, became the youngest gold hunter in Japan. His fame skyrocketed, girls flocked to him, and he wore gold and silver all over his body. On the contrary, Subaru began the life of a bug at school. His lackeys tortured him to the point of wetting his pants. At home, he lived in a warehouse, no different from a bug cage. It was hot in summer and cold in winter. He was abused by his parents and his brother Taiga, worked hard from day to night, and sometimes was used as a pet by him. He couldn't go east or west. Like one night, he was forced to go by water. Subaru wanted to resist but couldn't, so he had to take the money he threw in his face and go by water. He walked on the road, depressed, and thought about his life. He thought of his brother's contemptuous eyes, and felt hopeless. He thought of the scene when he was old and weak, with shaky limbs, still had to kneel down with both hands, holding the money he gave to do chores for him. He suddenly felt like dying, just to end it. Subaru remembered his bitter past, when he rushed into the gold gate. Then by now, he would have everything, and there was no point in living this life. It was true that he wished for what he saw, as soon as he said he wanted to die, he met three of Taiga's lackeys. They had just returned from farming monsters, their faces were ugly, and they had some scars, so they were very angry. And they happened to meet Subaru. It was really bad luck. Subaru was cowardly, but not stupid. He knew he was about to be beaten again, so he dragged his body and ran away. But how could he compete with them, he was chased until his pants fell off, and was cut off one arm by them. He was played with by them like a beast. Just now, he thought he wanted to die, but when he was close to it, he clung to life. He was kicked into a dead end by them, and fell down. Subaru was desperate crying, but they wouldn't let him go. They beat him, blood splattered everywhere. He thought he was about to die, when one of them was about to use his copper rank skill to finish him off, a gate suddenly appeared, cutting him in half. He died instantly. The gate appeared. Before his eyes, Subaru saw a bronze five-star gate, but strangely, it started to crack, then turned to silver. It did not stop there, it continued to crack, then turned to gold, and something unprecedented happened. The gate kept shaking, then turned into a rainbow gate. Subaru saw the sun gate of truth shining through. This time, no one would be able to steal his heart. He crawled step by step, trying to get inside the gate. The two bronze rankers did not let him do that easily. They tried to use their skills to stop him cutting off one of Subaru's legs, but Subaru was the successor of Levi Experman, the one-legged legend. How could he give up so easily? His motivation increased tenfold, he tried his best to rush into the gate. He had to get everything, the rainbow gate closed. Subaru collapsed on the floor, and a monster slowly appeared. It smiled cunningly, the rainbow challenge began. Subaru lay face down, not knowing anything about the sky, the moon, or the wind. The monster approached him, stabbed a finger through his head, and a burst of electricity flashed. 
the system announced the start of updating and upgrading his body, removing his nearsightedness, his two cut legs also grew back. His heart and lungs also returned to normal. Subaru opened his eyes wide, suddenly woke up, and sat up. His eyes met the monster, who jumped back, moving away from him. The monster turned its back and went to the chair. It sat down and put its feet on the chair. Subaru was still confused as if it was a joke. Where was he and who was he? After a while of loading the final update, he finally realized that he was in the Rainbow Gate, and the monster sitting arrogantly, with its feet on the chair, was the owner of this gate. Subaru trembled, thinking back to the story of his idol's test. He met a golden knight and had to defeat him with a sword to get his power. Subaru sweated, how could he beat the person who looked like a monster? The monster leaned on its arm, seeming to lose patience. It sighed, called Subaru a monster, scratched its head, and asked him if his body had fully recovered, or if his brain was waterlogged. Subaru was pointed out by name, then sweated and trembled, saying that he was fine. The slow boy still had not finished loading, he did not expect that he and the monster were talking. He was doubting his life, then the monster waved its hand, telling him to hurry up and do the proper procedure of the D-test. If he could hit him once, he would give him power. Subaru interrupted, asking who the monster was, what the fuck, what the hell was going on. Subaru quickly explained that there were three types of gates, gold, silver, and bronze but he had never seen, nor heard of, a rainbow gate before. The hot-tempered monster did not wait for the boy to finish, and interrupted. He did not care, he said, and threw a powerful force at Subaru. The rainbow gate appeared again. Subaru did not dare to move, he hugged his head in fear. How could he touch a finger on the monster? The monster had lost patience, it kept tapping its hand on the armrest, it shouted at Subaru. Lift your ass up and fight, I want to finish this pile of debt quickly and go home to sleep forever, what a waste of time. Subaru was scolded in the face, he trembled and replied. He also wanted to stand up, but his legs were shaking, he couldn't get up. Save the monster brother as if he heard a joke, he just covered his face helplessly. Damn it. How did this guy get chosen? Main character Halo or something? The monster had no other choice, he waved his hand a few times, and immediately, some weapons fell from the sky around Subaru. The young main character thought he was about to die, he screamed like giving birth, as if he was a piece of fat in his mouth. The monster pointed to the weapons and told him. If you are afraid, don't dare to fight, then use those things. If you can't do it even then, then find another door. Subaru trembled, thought chose between fighting this monster or going back to his previous life. He thought for a while, then shivered. He dragged his leg toward the door. The monster brother stroked his chin, really. The monster also added a few words to insult Subaru's self-esteem, the weak snowflake. It's not that the younger brother opened the door because he wanted power, right? He's no better than a disgusting worm. The monster's mocking words still echoed in the main character's ears, especially the word worm. He thought back to before, how many people called him a worm, they trampled him under their feet, not even as good as a monster livestock. Seeing him seemed to have no intention of turning back. He sighed wearily. Well, whatever, I'm going back to sleep, you just live like that for the rest of your life with your hands and feet crawling on the ground go and take responsibility for your choice. Subaru's tears fell. He faintly saw his 70-year-old self reflected on the door. He clenched his teeth, slammed the door. This action surprised the monster brother, he turned to see what the younger brother was going to do. Subaru was like crazy, but he kept hitting the door, cursing and yelling. What the hell is that? What cage is that? What nozzle is that? A bunch of beasts, you are always arrogant about yourselves. The monster brother saw some progress and got excited. He smiled, he was about to go back to sleep. Subaru, on the other side, 
clenched his fists, shouted and cursed nonstop. You guys think you have power and you can do whatever you want, right? Calling others worms is okay? The monster dogs were more and more interested, they knew how to take advantage of the opportunity and add fuel to the fire. They kept attacking Subaru. He laughed loudly, mocked. Of course it's okay, you idiot. The resentment was pushed to the peak. Subaru yelled, revealing his own humiliations. You guys hurt me too, you treat me like garbage. Why, why are you so miserable? The monster laughed more and more happily, he had grasped Subaru's pain point, and kept poking at it. One worm, two worms made Subaru more and more angry. He shouted. Shut up, I don't want to hear it. Subaru was injected with chicken blood, his courage increased by ten billion in front of the monster's expectant eyes. Subaru rushed forward without hesitation, he punched the monster in the face. After punching, he realized he had done it. The monster brother was satisfied, he stood up, patted Subaru on the shoulder, and praised him non-stop. Awesome, damn it. You can do it. If you put your heart into it, I can feel the intense hatred in your punch. I was not wrong at all, I approved of you. Immediately, the monster bit hard on Subaru's shoulder, making him stunned. A surge of power came, Subaru screamed in pain. He thought the monster was going to kill him, but this time Subaru was different, he didn't open his mouth and wait for death anymore, he immediately regained his spirit, and bit hard on the monster's shoulder. The monster brother was happy, interesting, he would give him a few more favors. The rainbow power was more intense than before, to the point that Subaru couldn't bite anymore, he just fell down there. The experiment at this time also confirmed, it surpassed the body configuration. Subaru's current state was a monster hunter. He smiled contentedly, looked at his work, said his name was Vanquish and said goodbye, hoping to see him again. Vanquish gradually disappeared. This time he was really happy. Main character Ariel Subaru became a high-level hunter. He is now an inheritor of Vanquish's power, the vampire ancestor. Subaru woke up faintly, a series of skills updated in front of his eyes. Blood Mold Skill Level 1, plus Bonus Rainbow Skill, plus a series of other skills. The Blood Taker of Those Who Hate. The halo of the sun under the shadow, Subaru's eyes sparkled. He was still confused, he muttered rainbow, then a series of notifications turned into notifications that the test gate disappeared. Subaru was stunned when he read the line that he had to get out of the door within 30 seconds. The ground was collapsing, he couldn't even lift his body. He looked at the door that was gradually disappearing, then he fell freely outside the door. The two thugs saw the rainbow gate shattered, they guessed that the worm dog Subaru was dead. He failed, what a waste of time. They turned around, about to leave, then the debris of the gate behind them moved. Main character Subaru version, handsome and cool, not crippled, rushed out. The two guys saw his appearance, then they were surprised and clenched their teeth bitterly. How did this bug become a hunter? Sa and Kia shouted at Subaru, asking him if he had become a god master. Subaru was stunned, and could not recover his senses. He vaguely remembered that he had received power from Vanquish. Before Subaru could say anything, the two men swung their swords at him. But he was no longer the useless bug he used to be. He felt like someone had possessed him, and he easily dodged the attack of one of them. He raised his hand, and asked them to wait a minute. The other one was shameless, and accused Subaru of stealing their door while robbing it. Subaru was confused, the door was his. The other one continued to swing his sword, and attacked again. But his attack was slow as a snail in Subaru's eyes. Subaru bent down and avoided his sword. He could see all his sword moves, and no matter how much he swung, Subaru could dodge them all. The remaining one was gaping, and the other one was getting more and more angry. He kept chopping down, and Subaru seized the opportunity, grabbed his sword hand, and told him to stop. 
he fell down, and was surprised that his hand was stopped. But when he saw Subaru's leg shaking like a sieve, he was confident. He grinned and showed his fierce face to Subaru. Subaru, who was timid, was scared by him, and let go of his hand. He apologized to him. He took the chance, punched Subaru in the back, and then punched him in the face. He cursed Subaru for being a ragged kid who dared to compete with him. Subaru was hit a few times, and thought he was in pain. But it turned out not to be as painful as he thought. A status board appeared in front of him, a system guide, and a HP bar representing his life. When it reached zero, he would lose his ability. So he had to avoid getting hit as much as possible. Subaru suddenly realized that this was the vision of a god master. The punch just now did not hurt, because he had really become a god master. The other one saw that his punch did not affect him, and gritted his teeth. The remaining one tried to stop him, but he did not listen. He did not want to be humiliated by the guy who wet his pants in the morning. He became hot-headed, and used his ultimate skill, the Red Rose. He gathered his strength in his hand, and threw it at Subaru. Subaru was hit by the attack, and his hand and face started to bleed. He groaned, and panicked. He thought he was going to die. Subaru looked at his attributes, and was shocked. He lost too much blood, and if he got hit a few more times, he would die. The other one was stunned. He said, Are you kidding me? My red rose can destroy a car. Subaru, the bug, was hit by his attack, but only got injured. He could not believe it. The remaining one still tried to persuade him, and told him to turn back and enter the golden door. Subaru was clearly stronger than the golden door, but he did not listen to anything. At this time, Subaru was at level 1. He had to take this opportunity to kill him. If he leveled up, they might not be able to handle 0.1% of him. He had to take advantage of this and kill him. Subaru did not know what the two men were talking about. He looked around, and tried to escape. But before he could run, he was tied up by a bunch of ropes. This was the ultimate skill of the remaining one, the rope. They discussed it for a while, and decided to cooperate. Subaru was tied up, and could not move. The swordsman who attacked him earlier came back to attack him again. Subaru was confused, he did not know how to use his special skill, he had to do something. When he closed his eyes, waiting to be stabbed, a mysterious force activated his special skill. A bunch of red swords sprouted from his body, and stabbed the man. He coughed blood, fell down, and the one who deployed the special skill appeared. It was Vanquish, he had just used his blood control skill, he considered himself a god master, and he had the responsibility to guide his successor. Vanquish, although he cursed and complained, still taught Subaru how to use his skill. The blood control skill allowed the user to manipulate the blood condition for 10 seconds. Just now, the blood had turned into swords, he explained that simply. The rest, the main character had to imagine himself. After 10 seconds, the swords returned to their original blood form. Vanquish reminded Subaru to ignite his anger, and then disappeared, not letting Subaru stay stunned for long. The man, although he was seriously injured, still tried to swing his sword and attack him. Subaru dodged, avoided, he backed away, he could not believe that this guy was still able to attack. The man coughed blood, he did not stop spitting out curses. Subaru, he cursed him to go die, the murderer who killed his friend. The man became more and more angry, he blamed Subaru, why did he not die sooner? Even if he died, no one would care or miss him. Subaru was used to hearing such insults. He was silent, thinking of vanquished words. He had to ignite his anger, this time he would not be silent, he would not endure the insults anymore. Subaru emitted a rainbow light, he made up his mind and started to attack. With just one punch, Subaru easily broke the sword of the man. Then he punched him straight in the face, making him fly eight meters away, 
his face scraping the wall, flying up to the sky. The other one saw his friend fly up, and landed like a pile of garbage, then he started to tremble. He saw Subaru approaching him with a fiery momentum, he used his escape skill and ran away with the man. Subaru could not believe his eyes, the man had run away. The man ran desperately, afraid of being chased from behind, he could not believe his eyes. The punch just now was incredibly powerful, what was the reason for that? He had only robbed one person, that useless bastard Subaru had gotten his power from what monster? Subaru knelt down, he raised his hand happily, he had won, his first victory in his life. He turned around and looked at the mess in the alley, and the body of Kunisaki that had been cut in half. What should he do with this mess? The next morning, the police discovered the condition of Kunisaki's body. The body was cut in half like this, it was definitely not done by a human. They suspected that it might be a monster from the underworld. Just then, Subaru's idol, Hirosaka Renzi, said that he had investigated around. There was no sign of any monster from the underworld. They found the Godmaster registration card of Kunisaki. To cut a Godmaster in half, the culprit had to be at least as strong as a silver Godmaster. Hirosaka Renzi felt his heart flutter. It was strange, but not his, but his Godmaster, Louis. Hirosaka Renzi gave the card back to the police officer. Now was not the time for Godmasters to fight each other, their duty was to destroy as many gates as possible. Hirosaka Renzi looked up at the sky, a clock was counting down, signaling something bad was about to happen. Subaru had not returned home yet. Ariaki Taiga, his close brother, worried about him, rushed into his bug cage, looking for him, angrily cursing. Subaru had not even read the live message. Taiga opened his phone, he suddenly scrolled to a news update two hours ago, a bronze godmaster was assassinated by another godmaster. Taiga scrolled down to see the information, and then he recognized someone. This guy was one of the three bullies who harassed Subaru. Ariaki Taiga suddenly had a bad feeling. He thought about the past, when a golden door automatically appeared in front of Subaru. If it wasn't for him, maybe Subaru's life would be different now. Taiga clenched his teeth, and his face twisted. He raised his fist and smashed Subaru's bug cage. Was that bug a Godmaster now? At the headquarters of the Japan Godmaster Federation, were the Godmasters who awakened their abilities and the official organization that controlled the gates were located, Subaru was timid and looked around. Everyone here was a Godmaster. He went to the reception desk to register. He wanted to register as a god master in Japan. It was illegal for non-members to enter the gates, so if he wanted to become stronger, he had to become a member. The case was not considered a murder, and the investigation of the death of the god master was also the responsibility of the god masters. A strong opponent, there was a high possibility that a gold god master would appear. If that guy was Taiga, he would die. He had to destroy as many gates as possible. That was the only way to level up and prepare himself. The guide started to explain the rules. Subaru didn't pay much attention, he had done his homework at the internet cafe. There were three things to keep in mind. First, if he wanted to break the gate, he had to level up. Second, the more stars the gate had, the harder it was to deal with. Third, after breaking the gate, he could exchange the stars for money. Subaru suddenly remembered that he had dropped the star named Swattery yesterday. He asked the guide if he could exchange it for money. He had no money in his pocket now. Although he felt guilty, he couldn't help it. The guide who was smiling a second ago, from the next second. She stared at the star, and questioned Subaru. Whose is this? Subaru turned pale, and he stuttered to find an excuse. Yesterday, right after he became a god master, a gate suddenly appeared in front of him. After destroying it, he got this. The guide explained that non-members who entered the gate had to face a prison sentence of five years or a fine of up to one million yen. 
Subaru was shocked when he heard about the prison sentence, he was careless, he didn't know the penalty was so severe. His mind went blank. What should he do? On the other side, Subaru's cousin's dog, Taiga, walked arrogantly on the street. He went to the police station and asked about the assassination of the Godmaster yesterday. Subaru finally managed to exchange the star for money. Normally, when a non-member broke a gate, it was a serious crime. But in this case, the guide there turned a blind eye and helped him. So he was fine. After successfully exchanging the money, he was surprised by the amount he received. He didn't expect that a godmaster would get so much money. One star was one million yen, and five stars were more than one hundred million. For him, it was like a dream. Subaru had to risk his life to get it. Now he had to find a gate first, but his eyes caught a hair salon and a clothing store. Subaru looked at his ragged body, and then he decided to do a makeover himself. The old saying was right, money can buy anything, with money, Subaru's appearance changed completely. He was no longer the weak bookworm he used to be. Subaru carried all the bags from here to there, and he sat at a coffee shop waiting for his drink. He had never felt like this before, he was so ecstatic. He bought clothes by himself, he also cut his hair by himself. This was the first time he did those things, the first time he sat at a coffee shop. Subaru sipped his coffee. It was caramel macchiato, it had been a long time since he drank something sweet. Subaru suddenly felt emotional, he wiped his tears, and thought about his past life as a worm. Now you are different, for the first time in your life you enjoy freedom. Subaru clenched the glass in his hand, he made up his mind after finishing his drink, he must find the gate, and after breaking it, he would come back here to drink more. Now, he is a godmaster, no longer a worm like before. He had barely sat down, when suddenly a shadow covered him, the taiga dog had found him. It broke the glass door of the coffee shop and rushed in. It grabbed Subaru's collar and threw him out hard. Subaru was not prepared for anything, he had to bleed when he realized he was about to be thrown into a mother and child, he quickly used the blood control skill to keep himself from flying away. Subaru shouted, telling the mother and child to run away, he was injured by just one hit. Subaru cursed damn ten thousand times, his blood kept flowing, this was terrible, horrible. The taiga dog was approaching him with murderous intent, it was unbelievable. Subaru also became a godmaster. Subaru clenched his teeth, stopped the bleeding, fought with the golden godmaster, even though he was only level one, he would not give up. The two fought and caused traffic jams on the road, especially the target was the golden godmaster, Ariaki Taiga. It didn't care about anything. Subaru asked the core why it found him, but the taiga dog sneered, it didn't bother to answer, but punched him in the face telling him to use his brain. Subaru struggled, dodged the punch, he backed away a few steps. He shouldn't have turned on the machine to check the money transfer with GPS on his phone. Taiga thought that was too trivial, a comedy. It used the golden arm skill, its right arm was covered by a layer of bright gold armor. Subaru, no matter how stupid he was, realized the battle had begun. He closed his eyes, felt vanquish inside. It told him one more thing about the bloodline skill, that was the skill to turn HP into blood and control it freely. But if he used too much, his HP bar would run out soon. Subaru, you don't need to win today, you need to survive, that's the only thing you think about. The power gap between Subaru and Taiga was 22 levels. Fighting head-on, it was like hitting a rock with an egg. Ariex Taiga used the golden impact skill, launching an explosion at Subaru. However, he used blood to create a rope and swung up to the sky, intending to escape. Taiga was not stupid, it realized that Subaru was imitating the skill of its junior. It reacted immediately, Taiga jumped into the air, punched Subaru from above. This time he was quick, dodged it, making Taiga's punch hit the ground. Subaru breathed a little, then damn, this guy was too strong, 
he would die if he got hit by one move. Taiga looked like that, but it was still analyzing Subaru's skills. According to its preliminary assessment, Subaru had the skill to shoot ropes from his hands, then move freely and grab objects. That was too useless. Taiga continued to rush towards Subaru, attacking. It was determined to kill him. Subaru calmed down, used HP to create a layer of smoke around himself. He took the opportunity to sneak behind Taiga, and used the punch that knocked down Saatari to hit Taiga. But it didn't hurt him at all. On the contrary, his hand bled. He screamed in pain. Taiga took the opportunity to swipe his hand at Subaru's chest, his blood splashed. The HP bar continued to drop. Subaru hugged his chest that kept bleeding. Taiga smiled coldly. It was about to grab Subaru's head to end the game, when suddenly some sharp spikes emerged from the ground towards Taiga. Subaru hadn't given up. He threw the blood that had splashed earlier at Taiga, turning them into bones and blood blocks attacking Taiga. He had used all his life force to create the hardest blood possible, but they had no effect on Taiga. Subaru hugged himself, feeling desperate. Taiga was on a different level in speed, strength, defense, everything. Taiga crushed the blood cube that Subaru had created, and stepped towards him. Subaru was stunned, speechless, even when he became a god master at the brink of death. No matter how many skills he used, he could not defeat Taiga. Subaru looked at Taiga's hand grabbing his face. It could not let Subaru live any longer. If he leveled up, it would be troublesome. It had to kill him now, and not let him lay eggs. Subaru looked at the fist coming towards him. Taiga punched hard, sending Subaru flying. But contrary to its expectation, Subaru blocked it. He had used almost all of his HP to create something soft and sticky to resist Taiga's punch. He had created something that could disperse the impact like an airbag. The soft sticky thing stuck to Taiga's hand, and spread out. It tried to shake it off, but it could not get rid of it, the thing that Subaru imagined as an unbreakable rubber. He looked at his MP bar that was decreasing rapidly, this was the crucial moment. Subaru raised his hand, and summoned some other blood cubes. The duration of blood control was 10 seconds, even if he used up all his MP. He had to stop Taiga, the blood cube stuck to Taiga, making it unable to move. Taiga was furious, but she could not do anything. What could it do now, just stand there like a madman? Subaru took the opportunity to escape. His goal was to survive for 10 seconds, until the blood control expired, and return to normal blood. Taiga tried to chase him, but Subaru created a smoke screen, making it lose direction. Taiga clenched its teeth, frustrated. It had been played by Subaru like a fool. It was about to chase Subaru again, when it suddenly stopped. The people who came were Hirosaka Renzi, along with him were Udu and Shikishima. At this point, it also realized that it had gone too far, but how could it give up so easily? It had to chase Subaru but before it could finish, it was chained from behind. Taiga sweated, she could not believe it. The seven golden godmasters gathered here. Hirosaka Renzi raised his sword to Taiga's neck to force it. It gritted its teeth, it could not continue to fight anymore. On the other side, after Subaru left, he ran away. He ran for his life, then stopped on the rooftop of a building. He had escaped successfully. Subaru bit his lip, he could not touch that guy at all, if he was found again, he would be dead for sure. Subaru looked at his ragged clothes. He had just bought them, the other clothes he had left at the cafe. Subaru sat on the rooftop, shopping was fun. He made up his mind to regain his freedom. He did not want to go back to the rotten life he had before. He would become stronger. At some gate, a girl was arguing with a group of people. She pointed at the gate, insisting that she had reserved it first. She had to book it online, the group of people did not bother to reason, they did not care about the reservation of a weak girl. 
They told her to leave the gate for them. The girl was not easy, she seemed very confident. She clasped her hands and prepared to fight. She was the bronze god master Amisa Sazaka. The moment she spoke, she was beaten by the group of people. They dusted her off, they wondered how such a weak person could survive until now, it was amazing. Amisa Sakura was only at level 8, but she had to face a team of level 13. Of course, she couldn't beat them. The other team didn't hesitate to mock her for being old and still losing to them. Amisa Sakura was angry, but she couldn't say anything. Their skills countered hers, so she couldn't do anything. They relied on their numbers and strength to provoke her. They told her to give up the gate. They said that someone like her, who had no skill, shouldn't exist in this world anymore. Amisa Sakura felt hurt by their words. In the past, she had been forced to leave her team because she had no talent. That's why, with these people, she would never give up. She would never admit defeat. The blonde-haired guy sneered. He raised his hand to end the game. Amisa Sakura also thought that she was about to die. At that moment, Subaru appeared out of nowhere. He politely asked Han and the others who were deciding who would enter the gate based on the criteria of the most suitable person. Everyone's eyes turned to Subaru. He raised his hand and volunteered, asking if he could join. The others were annoyed. They all had the same question. Who is this guy? The blonde-haired guy was arrogant. He walked up to Subaru and asked where he came from. He grabbed Subaru's collar and tried to drag him away. But Subaru quickly used his blood control skill, making the guy fall face down. Subaru said in a low voice that he didn't have much time. He had to become stronger by any means. The others who witnessed this were stunned. They became angry and asked Subaru what his level was. He answered that he was only level 1. The others didn't believe him, thinking that he was lying. They guessed that he had some kind of long-range skill to attack his opponents. If he was really level 1, then they could just crush him with the gap between their levels. Immediately, they all rushed to attack him. But Subaru, with his super hack skill, easily made them eat dirt after confronting them. To him, they were slower than snails. It didn't take him much time to defeat them all. The blonde-haired guy who was knocked out first woke up. He stood in a corner. He took the opportunity to use his skill. He pulled out a gun and shot continuously at Subaru. He thought that he would be able to kill him, but no. Subaru's blood control skill nullified everything. He didn't even move a step. He punched the guy again in the face, making him break his glasses, spit blood, and fall to the ground. Amisa Sakura stood on the side and watched. She was speechless. In her eyes, Subaru only used one move to finish them off. What kind of monster was he? If he was really level 1, then his skill level must be extremely high. Amisa Sakura wondered if Subaru's skill level was the Divine Sovereign Gold Sand. On the other side, Subaru took off the clothes of the others and put them on. His clothes were torn to pieces. After fixing himself up, he walked to the gate. Before the astonished eyes of Amisa Shizuka, Subaru smiled lightly, bowed slightly, as if to greet her, and then walked into the gate. Suzaka felt something was wrong, but when she realized it, it was too late. Subaru had taken her gate. Subaru stepped into the gate in front of him. A board showed the parameters of the Karakin volcano stage with a difficulty of two stars. Subaru exclaimed, looking around. So this is what the gate looks like. Although this is a dangerous place, where monsters are easy to encounter, the scenery is really beautiful. As he was admiring, the gate behind him suddenly opened, hitting him on the head. Subaru was in pain, looking at the person who had just rushed in. Amisa Sakura looked at him with a puzzled eye, what the hell is this? Amisa Sakura casually entered and locked the gate. A board announced that the gate had been confirmed locked and the god owner could not leave the stage until the boss was defeated. 
Amisa Sakura smiled mischievously, now those weirdos outside can't get in anymore. Subaru still didn't understand what was going on. Didn't he take the gate fair and square? Where did this girl come from? Amisa Sakura spoke up to deny it. She had reserved this gate for herself, but the people outside had tried to take the gates that were found and registered on a website. The god owner could book the right to break the gate on it. Subaru gasped, understanding the problem. He couldn't break the gate if he did it all by himself. He hurriedly apologized to Amisa Sazaka, explaining to her, This is the first time I've entered a gate and I ask you to let me accompany you. I have to level up at all costs. Amisa Sakura saw his earnest attitude, and believed him to be honest and agreed to let him go with her. She also knew the feeling of wanting to become stronger at all costs. So Subaru got to go with Sakura, but on the condition that when exchanging for stars, she would take seven parts and he would take three parts. Subaru didn't think anything, and accepted. When it came to the greeting and introduction, Amisa Sakura introduced her name to him. Subaru was about to say his name, but suddenly remembered that he was now a criminal accused of assassinating the god owner. He was flustered and hastily blurted out the name of Vanquish. As they were about to set off, a rock suddenly flew from behind Amisa Sazaka. Subaru quickly warned, intending to use his ultimate skill to help her, but Sakura turned around and easily smashed the rock. While the two were not paying attention, a group of goblins and kobolds appeared. Amisa Sakura was excited and eager to fight. She said, she clenched her fist, and rushed towards the small demons so that the god owner could defeat the monsters. The underworld needed to strengthen the physique, reflexes, overcome the biological limits and above all have the ultimate skill. Subaru stood on one side and witnessed Suzaka skillfully using her special technique to defeat the small demons. He opened his mouth in admiration, as the small demons were quickly killed. Subaru's face was full of admiration, as she defeated them with just one powerful punch. On the other side, Amisa Sakura, after defeating the small demons, became more confident. Her skill was to stun the opponent and attack from a distance, which would counter her skill. But when fighting in close combat, she was invincible. She was boasting when suddenly a bigger group of demons appeared. Amisa Sakura's skill could stun the opponent, but only for three seconds. From the moment they were hit, in other words, she had to finish off the enemy or escape within three seconds, or else she knew what would happen. Amisa Sakura cried without tears. She was surrounded by the demons, and had to open her mouth to ask Subaru for help. Subaru just stood there. He heard Suzaka's words, and said, Leave it to me, and did not move an inch. Subaru took a while to understand Suzaka's situation. He realized that her technique also had a time limit like his blood control. Suzaka was too far from him, and she was still in the middle of the demons. So he could not use his blood blade to fly around. He had to try something new. Subaru used his blood control, and shot blood threads towards the demons, tightening them around their necks. He tightened his abdomen, and clenched his butt in front of Suzaka's astonished eyes. He took a momentum and pulled the threads hard, making the demons fall and break. A beam of light enveloped Subaru. The system signaled that he had leveled up, and he gained four levels. His blood control technique also reached level two, and the time limit increased to 15 seconds, and the strength effect was enhanced. Subaru looked at his body, and the wounds he had received from Taiga had healed. His strength was increased, and his HP and MP were fully restored. It was great, coming here was the feeling of leveling up. It was so cool. Amisa Sakura ran over at this time, and she was shocked to see that the demons around had all died. She could not believe that Subaru had killed them all by himself. What kind of monster was he? Subaru saw Suzaka and his eyes sparkled. He praised her technique as amazing. Amisa Suzaka was confused, and she thought she should be the one saying that. 
Subaru did not understand Suzaka's technique, which stunned the opponent without exception. But Suzaka added that it only worked on enemies who were three levels lower than her, and if they were higher, the time would be less than three seconds. Subaru explained, but wouldn't that mean she would be invincible if she used her technique every three seconds when fighting solo? Amisa Suzaka froze for a moment and then realized that she had just learned something awesome. Subaru pointed to the ice tray with some demons still standing there. Suzaka felt more confident and told him to stand there. She hurried to the rock wall. Suzaka applied the theory, and Subaru had just taught her to punch first and then stun the enemy for three seconds, and then punch again. Sure enough, the demon could not react. Suzaka punched continuously like that and finally succeeded in killing the demon. She was happy. She came out with her eyes shining brightly, and she immediately had more motivation. She called the other demons to come. Subaru stood on one side and watched, and he was also happy. Sakura seems to be fine now, but you have to do something else. Amisa Sakura was happily farming monsters, when she suddenly saw a notification that a boss had appeared. She quickly turned to call Subaru, but saw him standing face to face with two bosses, level 17 and level 12. Subaru was not afraid at all, he told Sakura to finish the rest he would take care of this part. The two sides fought fiercely, from the ground to the air. The level 12 wolf swung its claws at Subaru, who blocked them repeatedly. The remaining level 17 goblin boss sat on the wolf's back and took the opportunity to activate its ultimate skill. It shot six level 2 arrows in a row, which were green and flew toward Subaru. They also scattered in different directions. Subaru quickly activated his blood control skill, which wrapped around his body to defend against the arrows. They hit the sphere he created, causing it to explode. Subaru fell freely to the ground. These two were too strong, if his blood control was not level 2, he would have been done for. So this was a boss, its skills were overwhelming. Sakura stood outside, worried. The fight was too tense, she could not jump in to help him. Her ultimate skill was completely useless, because the level gap was too big. She had to clear these small monsters first. On the other side, Subaru used his blood control skill again, gathering a lot of knives and throwing them at the two bosses, but they had no effect. The wolf easily dissolved his skill and jumped on the goblin, who kept shooting arrows at him. Subaru had no choice but to defend against the rain of arrows. He attacked and defended, but nothing happened. The giant wolf was too agile and dodged his attacks, and the goblin leader. It attacked from a distance with its archery skill, which was very skillful. He could not find any openings, he could not even tie them up with his blood ropes. Not giving him time to think, the goblin activated its ultimate skill again. It shot an ice arrow level 3, which pierced through Subaru's shield and hit his shoulder. Subaru clenched his teeth in pain, it had a second ultimate skill. His blood shield could not block it, it read the situation too well. This boss was not easy. He fell into a trap. Subaru held his elbow down, the goblin prepared to shoot another arrow at him. Just as the arrow was about to shoot out, Amisa Sakura came out of nowhere and punched the wolf in the face, making the goblin lose its balance. Subaru gaped at the wolf, which was stunned. Wasn't that skill only effective against opponents who were three levels higher or lower? The wolf collapsed. Subaru turned back and saw the enemy, all of them had been defeated. Amisa Sakura had reached level 9, Sakura timed it right and punched it again, making the wolf stunned again. The goblin saw that the situation was not good, so it separated from the wolf and flew into the air. Sakura sweated, she left him that one. Subaru slowly got up, he turned his blood into rubber and tied it around the wolf's head. Then, he rushed up, turned his blood into a zipper and pulled it hard, reversing it. He successfully defeated the wolf and reached level 6, his body and HPMP recovered completely. 
Subaru started thinking about how to deal a strong blow in close range, he thought of Taiga's ultimate skill, the golden fist that was huge. Subaru also imitated it, he turned his blood into a fist, breaking the level 3 arrow of the goblin and defeating it. Subaru successfully leveled up to 9, his blood control skill was also upgraded to level 3, extending the usage time to 20 seconds. The Karakin Volcano Dungeon Difficulty 2 Star was completed. Aryan Subaru jumped to level 9, his attributes also increased significantly. Outside, the crowd that was waiting eagerly for Subaru to take off his shirt was sneezing continuously. He was shivering from the cold, and he swore to chop up the guy who stole his shirt. He had blonde hair, but he didn't pay any attention to him. What he cared about was the gate-breaking score on the current gate. The completion time made the others sweat. It usually took about two hours to clear a two-star gate, but the two of them only took fifteen minutes. They couldn't believe it. Just then, Subaru and Sakura also came out of the gate. They were immediately questioned by the others. They didn't believe that the two of them could break the gate in such a short time. At that moment, the announcement board confirmed that they had cleared the Karaka volcano. The remaining time would be added to the clock immediately. The time was added to the clock in the sky. It was a huge clock that could be seen from all over the world. Life would end when the time on it counted down to zero. The only way to stop it was to break the gates and use the extra time to add to it. Subaru understood that this was the reason why the God Master had to fight constantly. The naive orange-haired guy gaped. The two of them really did a two-star gate, so they should have been assigned to a level 10 or higher God Master. But they destroyed the gate with just two people. One was a level 1 and the other was a level 8 who was lost in thought. Then Subaru pushed closer, making him jump. He apologized to him for tearing his shirt and promised to compensate him. The orange-haired guy was scared to death. He quickly waved it off. He said he didn't need any compensation, and he could keep the shirt. The blonde guy appeared out of nowhere. He squeezed his teammate. He asked the orange-haired guy if he wasn't going to chop up Subaru. The orange-haired guy didn't dare to do that. He hurriedly denied it. He said he was just joking, and not to bother him. He changed the subject. He told everyone to leave. The people who had been mocking them earlier lined up. They bowed respectfully to Subaru and left. Subaru was still confused. Why did their attitude change faster than his ex-girlfriend? The door behind them suddenly shattered. Two stars fell out. Sakura grabbed the star and raised it up. She said to go exchange it for money. Subaru hesitated. He had something to say. They went to a coffee shop and sat down. He wanted to get the money under Sakura's name. She was puzzled. She didn't understand. The money was split 70 thirtieths. If he did that, what would he do with his money? Unlike Sakura, Subaru didn't care about the money at all. He stared blankly at the coffee cup. He was moved to tears. After breaking the last gate, he finally came back to this coffee shop. He thanked God. Sakura saw that Subaru didn't pay attention to what she said. She snapped and asked him what he was going to do with the money. Subaru mumbled. He said he would share the money with her later. Sakura suddenly asked a shocking question. Subaru spat out his coffee. She asked, Vanquish is not your real name, is it? Seeing Subaru's reaction, she could confirm right away. She guessed right. Subaru used a fake name. He didn't want anyone to know that he had broken the gate with such strength. Even though he was only level 1, he was extremely terrifying. Subaru was caught by Sakura and couldn't defend himself. But Sakura didn't mean to accuse him. After fighting side by side with him, she knew he was a good person. He had saved her life. And more than that, she still wanted to continue breaking the gates with him. From now on, she wanted to be his teammate. Sakura said. 
she felt a little embarrassed. She was willing to help him, even though she didn't know if she could. Subaru opened his eyes wide. Teammate. No one had ever said that to him before. This was the first time someone said that to him. Subaru suddenly felt happy. He felt a warm stream running through him. He held the glass of water tightly in his hand. He thanked Suzaka from the bottom of his heart. She had helped him a lot. If she really wanted to be his teammate, he would be very happy. Subaru decided to tell Suzaka everything about his real name and his past. He also told her everything that had happened to him in the last two days. After listening to Subaru's story, Suzaka also felt a headache. Who would have thought that his situation was more complicated than she had imagined? The Rainbow Gate, the accusation of assassination, Suzaka couldn't believe it. Subaru was the brother of Ariaki Taiga. Moreover, that dog had stolen his gate and became the Golden God King. That bastard was unforgivable. Suzaka cursed more and more. She asked Subaru if he wanted to become strong enough to defeat that dog Taiga. Subaru scratched his head, his life was threatened, so he just wanted to become stronger. Suzaka also told her own story. She had three daughters and they were all gate gods of her sisters and brothers. She was silver and only she was copper. At first, she was in a team with three people. But in the end, she was kicked out because she was a hindrance. That's why her goal was to become stronger and prove herself to them. Sakura blushed, embarrassed, because this was the first time she had confided in someone. She felt that her goal was similar to Subaru's, so she wanted to join him. They would become stronger together. Suzaka smiled brightly, reached out her hand, she wanted to be his teammate, and promised to never betray or abandon him. Subaru was stunned, no one had ever said such words to him. He held Suzaka's hand tightly, accepted. They became teammates. At the headquarters of the God King Federation, on the top floor of the political conference room, the Golden God Kings sat at a table and discussed with each other. Now, they had subdued Aikataga, so they were the only Golden God Kings who could act. Now the other God Kings didn't seem to care much. Six people were fine, without that dog Taiga, everything was fine. Anyway, everyone hated his arrogant attitude. The other God Kings seemed to agree. But the problem now was that except for the four-star gate, only the Golden God Kings could break the five-star gate. They didn't have enough people to deal with the difficult gates. Hirasaka Renzi proposed to increase the number of troops. Until the order to force Taiga was cancelled. He also planned to call the Silver God King group to join the five-star campaign. God King Shishimaru was shocked when he heard this proposal. Silver rank, sure. God King Yuduryu stroked his chin and calculated, 10 people above level 30 should be enough. Right now there were 7 5-star gates that needed to be broken quickly. For the 4-star campaign in Maguro City, they had decided to entrust it to Julieta's team, with an average level of 31. This team was led by the playboy Hayaki Julieta, level 38. Subaru and Suzaka, after setting the gate, came out and passed Julieta's team. They were worthy of being the strongest silver team. They had a lot of people and were very strong. But what they did had nothing to do with them. Subaru and Suzaka were excited, ready to go and break another two-star gate in Maguro City, the gate named Soldier's Trash Bin. The two entered the gate, and they were greeted by a long staircase, very long, leading down. The two slowly went down. Subaru was puzzled, he asked Sakura. Did you know what was in the gate beforehand? Sakura explained, you can go in and out freely, as long as you don't lock the gate from the inside. So the master took charge of the survey, and brought back the information. For example, the endless spiral staircase that they were walking on. Subaru realized, and Suzaka looked at the long and narrow staircase. It might be the perfect place for her skills to work. Suzaka told Subaru to try locking the gate and see what would happen. 
then the mission would start and the enemies would also appear. Subaru followed her advice and locked the gate. The system announced that the mission had begun. Suzaka was excited and prepared for battle. The loud noises started from below. Subaru suddenly had a bad feeling and felt a chill down his spine. He turned his neck and looked down at the railing below to see what it was. A bunch of skull soldiers were coming up one after another. Seeing their number, Suzaka also felt scared. Wasn't it too many? A skull soldier, while she was stunned, swung its sword at her. Luckily, Subaru reacted in time and used blood control to block it for her with one sword. Suzaka also reacted and punched the skull soldier in the face. The skull soldier flew away and died, but they couldn't lose their guard. Another bunch rushed over. These ones had to be level 10 or higher. They had to clear them all to get out of here. The two coordinated with each other. Subaru defended and Suzaka attacked. This narrow terrain was completely Suzaka's advantage, but there were too many of them. There was also the fear of people that he felt from the lower floor earlier. It was more terrifying than the goblin boss before. The skull soldiers were killed one after another, but Suzaka's endurance also had a limit. She started to breathe heavily. Subaru saw that the situation was not good and told her to take turns with him to fight the monsters, to avoid exhausting herself too much. Suzaka turned back and looked at Subaru with a puzzled look. Shouldn't it be the other way around? If you level up in the gate, your HP and MP will fully recover. The best way is to try your best until you level up. So Suzaka's current state was completely healthy, with 10,000 blood ready to fight on. Subaru also cheered up under her call and used all his strength to fight with Suzaka. He used blood control to transform into a frozen blood tide that froze all the skull soldiers. Suzaka looked at the skull soldiers struggling in the blood and laughed. His ultimate skill was still as awesome as always, ha! Huh? Subaru gasped and told Suzaka to hurry up and act, it wouldn't last long. Suzaka's eyes sparkled and she jumped up and stepped on the heads of the Skull Soldiers. She used her fastest speed to kill as many Skull Soldiers as possible. Success level up to 15. The rest, she left for Subaru. He understood, and used his ultimate skill to crush the frozen Skull Soldiers, and sent the rest to reincarnate. He also succeeded level up to 16. Suzaka couldn't say anything more. Subaru was crazy as she expected. Even the enemy had to scream. Suddenly, a skull soldier that hadn't died yet attacked Suzaka from behind. But the skull soldier was immediately shot down by Subaru's blood arrow. Subaru reminded her not to be careless. Suzaka could only swallow her regret and apologize. The two went deeper and deeper, killing more and more monsters but the bad feeling in Subaru's heart didn't go away. The pressure from below was getting stronger and stronger. They reached the end of the staircase. Subaru had leveled up to 19 and Sakura had leveled up to 20. The final boss was finally revealed. The boss was a skull wearing a long dress and a crown. It was Queen Judith, level 29. The skull suddenly opened its eyes and swung its whip. One whip of it made the ground around it seem to collapse. Subaru used blood control to protect both of them. He rated this boss as a long-range attacker with an unreal trajectory, as Sakura said, they really had no chance against it. Subaru clenched his teeth, he still wondered if the feeling of persistence and horror at the beginning was really from this boss. The boss swung its whip again. Subaru and Suzaka dodged. Suzaka was afraid that she would wet her pants, she turned to ask Subaru. What should they do? Even if they tried to approach, they couldn't stay long. Subaru was silent, he judged that this boss's skill was to use MP to whip, but was it true that when it ran out of MP, it would stop whipping like his blood? If so, this skill countered Suzaka's skill. 
her instant space would lose its effect when the level difference was too much. It would be better to use blood control to attack and defend at the same time. But then Suzaka would not get any experience from this boss. He was very happy when Suzaka said that she would be his friend and would never abandon him. Subaru shouted to Suzaka. He told himself that he would block its whip and Suzaka would hit it continuously until she was satisfied. Suzaka didn't understand what he meant but agreed. Subaru used blood control with a viscosity of up to 100%. The monster seemed to realize what he was going to do, it swung its arm to whip. The whip hit the blood he had just created. The blood split and stuck to the monster, controlling its movement. Subaru turned to tell Suzaka to act quickly, and she obeyed. She rushed up and punched the monster's face repeatedly. If Suzaka wanted to get experience points, her HP had to drop by at least 20%. The Godmaster specialized in defense and recovery had to try very hard to get stronger. Subaru glanced at the countdown timer, he reminded Suzaka that there were five more seconds, the blood control would lose its effect. Suzaka understood, she retreated just in time, the monster escaped from the control. It started to swing its whip again to attack Suzaka. She was protected in Subaru's blood control and returned intact. They were about to attack again, when suddenly a voice echoed from the monster. It asked Subaru where he got that power from. He was stunned, not knowing if he had heard it wrong. The monster just confirmed Subaru's judgment, the skull muttered. That guy couldn't give his power to a mortal. Subaru quickly figured out the problem the skull was talking about, it seemed to be talking about Vanquish. He hurriedly told the skull to calm down and talk slowly, why was it so angry? But the skull didn't listen, it went crazy, tearing its dress. It started to transform, this was the ultimate skill of a boss. It used all its MP to change into a different shape. The skull began to activate its ultimate skill. Subaru used blood control to wrap around both of them. The skull kept firing whips while transforming, making his blood shield boil and evaporate. If he didn't replenish his blood, he would soon be defeated. Looking at the MP bar that was gradually decreasing, he didn't know what to do with this momentum, his MP would run out sooner or later. Sakura was still behind him. Subaru also clenched his teeth, he switched his blood control to a blood shield and moved forward. The skull also raised its hand to attack him, but it was too slow. Subaru extended his blood shield into a spear, piercing through the skull, making its head fall off. The skull gradually disappeared, before fading away. It still couldn't believe that it had been defeated. Subaru succeeded, defeated the boss and leveled up to 20. Although he had defeated it, he couldn't be satisfied. The boss just seemed to know about Vanquish, but he had no choice but to kill it. He wondered if the owner of the door was the monsters of the underworld. Suzaka saw that Subaru had succeeded, so she jumped up happily. At the last minute, she decided to hide behind him, and she also leveled up to 21. Suzaka saw that Sakura also leveled up and was happy. You think that they have achieved their goal, becoming stronger. If you meet the boss again, you will ask him next time. Suzaka said they had defeated the boss, but they did not receive the gate opening notification. Suzaka was also puzzled, she had never encountered this situation before. Suddenly, a rainbow door appeared behind Subaru. Subaru was startled, he turned around. Suzaka also gaped. This was the first time she saw the rainbow gate. Suzaka was happy, she said it was Subaru's second gate. Subaru also felt strange, the gates appeared so many, was it too weird? Sakura, on the contrary, did not see it as a bad thing. Each gate had different conditions. She heard that you could get more skills after completing the challenge. Subaru stroked his chin, under what conditions, was it because he had reached level 20? Suzaka eagerly added, she heard that the strongest golden master, Hirosaka Renzi, had opened seven gates. Subaru also gaped when he heard that number. 
it showed that they were doing super well. At this rate, they would become the strongest duo on earth. Subaru looked at his hand, he could go so far, even though he only used blood control. If he could get more skills that were also strong like that, he could match the golden master. Suzaka urged Subaru to hurry up, come on. He snapped out of it, woke up, and looked at Suzaka's eyes sparkling with anticipation. He suddenly felt warm. Subaru turned around, twisted the door knob of the newly opened door. Then he cut off his left hand, and also cut a long line across Suzaka's body.